here. Oh my Just let me open this door. <sighs> Sandra was right. This is actually an amazing place for a wedding. It's all like carved wood in here, high ceilings. It would certainly make you feel important if you felt like you belonged here, right? Do you know what? I'm actually gonna take a quick selfie. Ah! <laughs> no, I'm in the actual council chamber, yeah. Yeah, a hundred years ago today, the king himself, George or something, gave a speech in here. Yeah, this day, June 22nd, 1921. Bizarre, isn't it? Apparently, that was the speech that launched Northern Ireland as a, a province or a country or a legally constituted place. It was a violent birth. <gasps> I'm so sorry, I know I'm not supposed to be here, but um, I was a bridesmaid and I'm just I don't interested. Mind. Oh. Between summer of 1920 and 1922, just over 557 people were killed, 300 of which were Catholic civilians, 180 were Protestants, and the rest police or armed forces, probably Protestant too. What? Who are you? I'm a historian. I also represent the new Northern Ireland. You do? I do. Voila. The new Northern Ireland. And I know everything about our shared history. I'm also a figment of your imagination. Hold on. Uh, how much... You're a figment of my imagination? Yep. You've based me on your subconscious idea of what a historian is. If you were 10 years older, I'd probably be white. Think of me a bit like Alexa, but better looking and present. You can ask me anything. Anything? Not that. Oh. You can ask me anything about the history of Northern Ireland that's in the public domain, because we both know there's a whole lot that's... Well, go on. It's a centenary. You're in the room where it happened, I'm here. You must have questions. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, right. Um, okay, so everyone knows that Northern Ireland has struggled with violence between Catholics and Protestants. And yes, I know in the past that was bad, but that wasn't the only thing that happened, right? We also had a war and there was a flu. Well done. A global pandemic, just like ours, but worse. And the First World War, I was right, there was also the First World War. Yes, the First World War ended in 1918. 20 million dead, 21 million wounded. Horrible. Horrible. But they did come home to a building like this. It certainly is majestic. <laughs> I wonder if they felt angry or pleased, you know, walking into a building like this during such horrible times. Especially if they were, you know, wounded in the war. People value beauty, something to fight for, their culture. I bet you didn't walk in here if you were working class in 1921, if you worked down the shipyard. Catholic and Protestant shipyard workers called a strike together in 1919 and 20 for better pay and conditions. The strike failed. Yeah, I thought it probably did. Let's talk about a hundred years ago. This beautiful building was only 15 years old in 1921. So still new. It must have meant something so shiny and so huge. It's like it's going, look at us, look at our city, look at this building where we're about to launch a... Do you know, I still don't know what to call Northern Ireland. So in 1921, they wanted us to walk in here, see that dome out there, and see the ceiling in here and feel something. But what you must have felt would have depended on who you were, where you belonged, and what was going on in the world around you. What was happening? 
Allah. The Protestants of Ulster are asleep. To the shame of Ulster Unionists, be it said that Sinn Feiners can obtain situation in so-called loyal Belfast. The Catholics are passing through a reign of terror. A regular and well-planned campaign for their complete expulsion from the city is in progress. The mad dance of death rages on in the city of Belfast. Human life is racking cheap. Nothing good happening. Uh, women got the vote in the 1918 election. Ah, the suffragettes. Yes, suffragettes got women the vote. As long as they were university graduates, over 30, wives of householders, or occupied property worth more than five pounds. So if they were factory girls working to support the war effort, then that didn't do them any good, did it? It didn't. When did they get the vote? You don't know. <sighs> Rude. Where do you think you get your rights from? You ought to be informed. Oh, you're so irritating. I know. But you like me. Yeah, I don't know why. You're Northern Irish. I represent the past. You're all obsessed with the past. Besides... Figment, remember? Yeah, yeah, whatever. When did they get the vote? Sorry? When did all women get the vote? 1928. Too late to influence things for the better in Belfast. Was it worse than the Troubles? Belfast became a byword for violence across the Empire. <sighs> of course it did. What's new? When they tell you... In the old days, everyone used to live together, neighbour to neighbour, celebrating the 12th of July like it was all some big picnic party. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them when they tell you things were rosier before the troubles. It was never just like that. Six times in the 19th century, the Belfast violence got so bad that riots shook the city and people died. Remember, 100 years ago, this island was all one country. So if they killed people in Cork or Dublin, we felt that in Belfast. And people born in Belfast were killed in Kerry, Cork and Dublin. And we killed or hurt their ones too. Yes, 100 years ago, there were suffragettes fighting for rights for women and trade union men trying to get better conditions for workers. But in our city, all that just got swept under the fear and hatred. You think the Troubles is the only time we've done this to each other? We have been stoning our children as they left their playgrounds for far longer than that. In 1921, our city was awash with grenades, rifles, even machine guns from the First World War. Being from Belfast a hundred years ago and then crouching on the straw on the floor of a dirty tram as you passed this street or that because gunmen from one side or the other would shoot you through the windows when you passed their area. Hearing about grenades thrown into other trams, schools, buses, businesses, about people dying as glass shattered into their bodies. It meant friends being shot on the spot because they get off at a particular stop or a mate being thrown in the lagging as people cheered from the bridge as his head went under because he couldn't swim. And that men being killed in one business or another for being one kind of Christian or another by other men who were sure they had right on their side. And not just men. 
a woman killed with her baby in her arms, an 11 year old boy shot dead, pleading with adults not to loot his family's business, grenades thrown at children playing on the street, blood on our hands and feet so thick, the Belfast Telegraph said they're raw liver strewn across Stop! I don't want to hear anymore, I've had enough! It's no different out there. Even if you don't watch the news, it's out there. Violence on the streets, people taking sides, I hate it. I'm tired of wincing at my own history, of being ashamed of my own culture. Who wants to live like that? What even is this place? How can I celebrate the start of Northern Ireland, when I'm angry and horrified about what happened, when I can't forget the past was so awful. So, don't forget, dig right in, get informed, understand what was going on. Think for yourself. I respect our Queen. Our culture. That's why I'm loyal. The Empire represents a time when we were winning. I think the current British royal family are a force for good. They try to do good in society. And that's how I live my life. I try to do good in society. I respect their example. Yes. I understand, but history is complicated. His Majesty King George V and Queen Mary spent four hours and 35 minutes on Irish soil to inaugurate the new Northern Parliament at City Hall on the 22nd of June, 1921. The landing stage at Donegal Quay was guarded by a detachment of cavalry and infantry, with 11,000 troops and policemen deployed along the 15-minute route that the carriageway would take to get to City Hall. 300 Scotland Yard detectives also lined the streets. The carriage passed along High Street, Castle Place and Donegal Square as 20,000 cheering locals lined the route. Outside City Hall, troops controlled who could get in and inside, the king was guarded by the Irish guards. The king and queen entered through those doors. Stood here. The king then began to speak. He said, I have come in person as the head of the empire to inaugurate this parliament on Irish soil. I inaugurate it with deep felt hope and I feel assured that you will do your utmost to make it an instrument of happiness and good government for all parts of the community which you represent. Everything that touches Ireland finds an echo in the remotest parts of the empire. The eyes of the whole empire are on Ireland today. That empire in which so many nations and races have come together in spite of ancient feuds and in which new nations have come to birth within the lifetime of the youngest in this hall. May this historic gathering be the prelude of a day in which the Irish people, north and south, under one parliament or two, as those parliaments themselves may decide shall work together in common love for Ireland upon the sure foundations of mutual justice and respect. Mutual justice and respect. Mutual justice and respect. What do you want the centenary to be about? King George V was here in this room 100 years ago today. Think about what he asked for. What do you want? 
mutual justice and respect and choices, my choices, good choices, 